What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, always, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. As y'all know, it's right there. It's free and it enables us to keep coming to you guys as often as possible with as many interviews as possible with as many icons of the game as possible. So please, please, please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one, and we appreciate your guys' support. Now, today, we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by my good friend, I've known for many, many moons, taking it back since the 90s, Cole 187, <laughs> a.k.a. Big Hutch, a.k.a. my friend. What's going on with you, man? What's up, fam? You know, I'm in the building. What's up, my friend? <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, Cole 187, a.k.a. Big Hutch, always putting out new music, and right now, he's got the Mansa Musa stuff he's promoting, the Life of a King yeah. song and yeah. video just came out recently. So we're yeah. going to catch up with him about that, as well as some Above the Law stuff. So let's start with the man oh, who moves to Life of the King. So what, what, what is this movement about, Hutch, and why did you start it? Well, you know, um, Master Moose is like the evolution. It's the, it's the, it's the um, evolution of Code 187, you know. Master Moose in the name means King Warrior. So, you know, um, I felt like when I was Code my journey as Code 187, I was the warrior. Now, me as being a grown version of Code 187, I'm a king version of that. So that's what the two that was the two words mean. It means king warrior, you know. And everything that I want to do now is on a royal level, be it, be it gangster shit, whatever it is, I want to be on a royal level, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like I, I earned my, you know, it's like, you know, now I'm a general, I used to be a soldier, now I'm a general, same thing, I used to be a warrior, now I'm a king. And that's how I, I kind of like, you know, wrote that into my whole concept. So it's always Code 187, you know, it's just now a more royal version of Code 187 and that's Master Musa now, you know. And what, what made you decide that you wanted to take that step and take this direction? Well, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, I, I think that we evolve all the time and, me as an artist, I wanted to actually show that instead of like saying, okay, it's the, it's Code 187 still, but I'm still doing the same. I'm still on the same mental, mental, you know, I still, I'm on the same mental wavelength. I'm on a total different wavelength now. You know what I mean? And not to say it's a, it's a bad thing. It's that I think that I want to show my growth. That's all, you know, as the individual, as the man, all those things, you know, so that's why, I, you know, that's why I'm in, in the mode that I'm in now. I would say more of a, a, a lifestyle than a movement because it's my lifestyle. You know, it's more, con you know, I'm more conscious of things that I'm dealing with in my own life, um, my personal life, in my business life, being a more of an entrepreneur, a mogul, you know, starting uh, um, different companies and stuff like that and still doing everything creative musically and you know uh in film and um just continuing to being exploring in the different things journeying taking myself on another journey you know so um like i tell people all the time it's always going to be i'm always going to be who i am you know it's just going to be more of that's all you know i'm never i haven't dropped co-187 i haven't dropped big hutch i haven't i'm still that it's just what I'm trying to, what I'm actually trying to give you guys is more of me as I've grown as the individual man, you know. Okay. And on the Life, yeah. of, Life of a King song and in the video, mm -hmm. I really appreciated, yeah. uh, or thought it was cool how you referenced the VSOP. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so looking, yeah. Yeah. looking back on that for uh, Black Mafia Life on that mm -hmm. album, do you guys, what what made you back then want to be like, man, we're going to do this VSOP song? Well, I think I think we, you know, we never been, you know, we grew up hustling. So, and you know the story, you know what I'm saying? We made our, you know, we made our first demo from Hustle Money. So we never, I mean, we probably drank old English when we were kids. Like, you know, we, and I'm talking about like when we was kids trying beer type of stuff, you know, once we grew up, and started seeing a little real money, like real money in the streets. We drunk like champagne and cognac, you know, stuff, you know. Um, so we always felt like we need our own anthem, like, you know, NWA had a ball, you know, Easy had a ball. We wanted our own anthem, which was VSOP, you know, which is what, you know, everything is fine when you're rolling with your homies and 
sipping on some VSOP. You know what I mean? That's KMG would say, rest in peace. Yeah, so that was our anthem as hustlers. You know, that's what we sipped on, Hennessy, Remy. Um, and then it went, you know, sometimes we would drink XO, but at the time, you know, we was just we was just heavy on the VSOP. So not the VS, but the VSOP. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And also that's our anthem as hustlers, you know, that was, you know. Yeah. And also with Life of a King, and one of the things that has always appealed to me about Above the Law was this uh, level of excellence and yeah. And for me, a celebration of black wealth and empowerment, because, you, that is, you know, mm -hmm. very important, in my opinion. And I think that that's something that from my first hearing you guys back in 1990, all the way to 2021, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. life is a, of a king. So why have these themes remained so constant and consistent for you throughout your career? Because I think for us, like if you go back to like, if you just say living like hustles, we kind of tapped on it. And you say vocally pimping, we were kind of tapping in on it. But Black Mafia Life was that theory. Black Mafia Life was the theory for us to actually say we want to be black entrepreneurs, we want to be black enterprise. We want to, even if we do it, even if we hustle, because it's about family and it's about a unit doing it. It wasn't, a, it was like each one teach one. It's like um, um, give people um, ideas so they can eat on their own. You know, I think that's what we were trying to say. So we always try to reach. The, the, the level of like black success, black elegance and not and not being, you know, you we've never kind of like said it's other people's fault, but our own. You know what I'm saying? If we don't have nothing, it's our fault. We've always stood on that ten toes down. So that's what I always have always tried to promote. That's what my crew has always promoted. We've always promoted self enterprise. You know, we were one of the few groups that always were self-contained. You know, we produced ourselves. We we did our own, we had our own image. We had our own, we created all that ourselves. You know, we, we you know we we paid for our own demo to get done. No, we didn't come to Rufus and say, hey, dude, our demo was done. We came, we paid for it. You know, so we always felt like black entrepreneurs. You know, with the gangster twist with it. You know, with the hustler. You know, because we came up hustling. So that's just our whole thing. Like to have finer things in life. If you hustling, working, grinding, you should have the finer things in life. You shouldn't want to settle for nothing but the best if you if you took those risks. So that was always above the law's concept, you know. Um, and it's just you know, you no, know, we were the first group that created the 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 slow the 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 the, the, the um the word phrase balling. You know, no one was saying balling. It wasn't Tupac. Rest in rest in peace, my homie Tupac, my little partner. I love to death, but it was us who created it. You know, and it was and it was um it was click. Around our clique, that's what we aspired to be, ballers. We didn't aspire to be like um, the guys that came from the neighborhood that couldn't move and have nice shit, have the finest things in life. So we already were, were talking on the Black excellence, Black wealth success from just a street grind. You know, we never look at it like, okay, we're going to be doing gangster stuff. We're going to at least be trying to empower our people mentally with like, okay, get yours, grind. If you're going to grind, Go buy a business. If you're going to grind, go put your money in that. Invest in this and grow from there, you know? Yeah. And fast forward in a little bit, that's, you know, one of my favorite songs from Uncle Sam's Curse is to Set Free, where you talk about empowering yourself. Right. And, and that's mm -hmm. a theme throughout your guys' catalog, which exactly has always impressed me. And another thing, going back to living like hustlers, that you talk about was uh, freedom of speech. Because that's... Right. That's very important, obviously, and necessary. <laughs> necessary right. and needed more and more. Right, right. So, so back in uh, 89 or 90, when you were making the Freedom of Speech record that ended up being on Living Like Hustlers, do you mm -hmm. remember what inspired and what those specific thoughts were that went into that song? Well, well you know, you know, if you, if you listen to the body of, of Living Like Hustlers, you know, and uh, me and Layla wrote Freedom of Speech. What we didn't really have was a really conscious record. You know, we had a lot of records about hustling and and and, and exposing the system and all that. You know, we listened to it. You know, um, and I, and and I was we need more of a conscious type of record. You know, what I mean that balances it out. So me and them sat down and we said, what about you know how they you know because at the time you got to realize they were really trying every record. You know what I mean? They was really saying that oh you don't have to write any of this and we're like okay what about freedom of speech? 
that's our right. You should be able to say we want to on our own record, on our own. Okay, yeah, we can't go yell fire in a church house, I guess, but we can say what the fuck we want to say on our piece of art. That's wrong. You can't, this art, you can't mute people with art. Yeah, you can, I probably can't say it on the network or anything, but, you know, so we felt like when they were poking at that, you know, telling us what we can't say, telling, you know, with, with Luke, getting with Luke and uh, two live getting hit and NWA getting checked for fucking police and all that. We felt like it was appropriate with a brother law album for us to make that statement. You know, we all should have freedom of speech and also it's on pump up the volume soundtrack too. So um, that was a pop record for us. You know, it was very necessary for our album because we didn't have a record like that. Yeah. And I think, that's one of the reasons why it really stood out to me and bringing up Layla, who I also know very well, of course, but I wanted you to <laughs> break, break down. Uh, he's a guy I think that's very crucial to a lot of what happened yeah. on the West coast, but doesn't get a lot mm -hmm. of, a lot of shine for that. So no doubt. Mm -hmm. So for you uh, working on freedom of speech and also the rest of living like hustlers, et cetera, mm -hmm explain what he brought to Above the Law that people may not appreciate or understand. Well, I, you know, I, and first of all, I mean, you know, he believed in what we were doing. We, some, we were some young kids coming up out of Pomona slash South Central because half of our crew was from there and the uh, other half was from Pomona. Um, he just believed what we were doing. Like at the time, it, it wasn't heard of. So that's one thing I want to say that he's the first person that believed in what we were doing. You know what I mean? And was able to basically he was going to do a record of his own at Rufus Records and he gave up his spot to put us on in that slot, you know? Um, and he, you know, he, he always was a big inspiration to um, what NWA was doing and he was involved in a lot of writing and ideals and all that stuff, as well as he was with us, you know what I mean? Um, Cause we were more like a, um, a gumbo, should I say? You know, I was the person that was the captain of the ship and everybody else kind of came with this and came with that and different theories and ideals and all these different things. And that's Layla was a part of that as well. But he just believed in us when he didn't have to. You know, he took us to easy. Um, and Dre, I don't want to say he convinced him, but hey, I mean, he had something great that living like us. demo was was brilliant. You know, what I mean? you know, we, me and Dre really didn't touch a lot of it, you know. But along with, with them mentoring the rest of us, I mean, he was a really big influence on how we did what we did, the structure of everything. Him and Dre were there hand in hand with us, yeah. you know, and that's why people give people give Dre a lot of credit for having us on point and, and in the right space. But it has a lot to do with Layla as well. You know what I mean? They, they both they both had everything to do without success you know what i mean so without those two guys and of course eric in the front office you know but creatively keeping us on track i would say it's, it's dr dre and laylaw you know what i mean actually helping us and guiding us how to make the right you know to to, to lay it out the right way you know what i mean to to, to elaborate what are you saying for is like law not getting a lot of you know the credit and accolades of things i think back then the guys who really really you know, the purists or, or, you know, who really believed in what was going on. I don't think they really seek all that. You know what I mean? I don't really think, I just think they did the right thing. You know, it's kind of like not, not, not like now where, where people say, oh, I need my credit for plugging you in or something. They kind of just did the thing they did to do. You know, it's like I tell people about me being a producer. I just got into producing heavy, you know, for my group because I was the music guy amongst the clique. I wasn't, you know, and they kind of like, okay, well, you know, you be the, you know, you be the point man of that, you know? And I think that's what Law done. Law just said, okay, I feel like you guys have something really special and it, you got, this needs, to, the world needs to hear it. It wasn't about him getting credit or anything, you know? So, I, and I don't think we're from that era. It's like when, when I started doing what I was doing, I was just trying to play my, I was just trying to play my part on the field, bro. You know what I mean? It's the same thing I feel about law. Law never, you know, law never did anything but, you know, put its arms around us and made sure that we became a success, you know. So shout out to Lay Law, man, for that.
Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was. I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gang bang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the street. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.